So, hi there and welcome to our new video series called Tips and Tricks. My name is Ayla Ushuldak and based on different topics, I'll be showing you some useful tips and tricks to expand your basic skills and improve your productivity. In this clip, we are starting with the first tip, using model generators during your modeling process. To access the dialog, we can find in the menu tools generate model members or surfaces and as you can see we have a lot of options for several structure generators starting here from basic 2d models like 2d frames or 2d trusses to more complex 3d models like 3d frames and also trusses we can even find stairs and also complementary elements like bracing and cells for stiffening your structure. As an example, we are going to create a 3D frame with bracings only using the model generator. And once again, go up to the menu tools and choose generate model members 3D frame. Then, as you can see, a new dialog box appears. And here we have to enter all parameters like the geometric information for our frame, cross section and member type, support type, and we can also choose the coordinates where our structure should be inserted. And we are starting with the geometry. Um, the number or spans, we can set this as 3 in x direction, 2 in y direction, and 1 in z direction. For our span lengths, we choose 5 in x direction, for the y direction 4, and maybe 3 for the z direction. Moving on to the cross section and member types, the program is telling us here that we need to create a new cross section. Um, we will start with the columns, so for this, open up the cross section library. And you can see here that we have many different cross-section types. So for the columns, we will begin with the rolled sections and in particular the IPE 300. Um, regarding material, we can import in from the material library and we will choose a steel for instance S235 based on the European standard. Then we click OK and we click OK once again. Now, as you can see, the same cross sections are set for all of the members, but for the other members, I actually want different cross section types. So for this, if you already know which kind of cross section you wanna have, it's quicker to click on the create a new cross section symbol and simply enter the name of the cross section. As you can see, RFM automatically imports the properties out of the library. We enter OK to finish our selection. Same procedure once again for the members in Y direction. Enter the name of the cross section and click OK. Um, under member type, we have several options using the drop down menu like the basic beam members. But for our frame, also a truss member, which you can see the program automatically inputs here. A truss is going to set a moment and release, so we are only transferring actual and shear forces. Um, as the next step, we can also change our support types for the structure by the drop down menu or creating a new support type. But for our frame, we just leave the hinge supports. In addition, we can specify where the structure should be inserted and we choose maybe this point. By entering OK, our frame is simply generated. So, as I've already mentioned, we can also create bracings and once again go up to the menu tools and then choose generate model members. Down here we can find bracing and cells. 
Then a new dialog box opens and as member type we choose tension as it's set on default. Then we select the cross section type and enter OK. As a next step we can choose those cells where we want to add a bracing. And as you can see RFM automatically recognizes closed ones. But for not completely closed ones like this one, we have to create first a virtual line in order to use it as a bracing cell. Once done we click OK and then we choose the cells, for example this ones. And then by entering OK, our bracing in the chosen cells are quickly created. So thank you for watching and if you have any new topic recommendations, just leave us a comment.